Well, we're back with the Galaxy. We got all the brake parts and stuff. Well, we got brake parts. We got hoses and belts and all that stuff. So we're gonna start working on this thing to try to get all the brakes freed up and working. We got a master cylinder and everything. Try to get a water pump on it, new hoses. Apparently it's hat day. His hair's looking nice. And uh, we're gonna get right to it and try to get this thing on the road. So if you didn't watch the video on this car earlier, we made two videos, one where we rescued it out of a junkyard after it was sitting out in a field for 30 plus years. And we did another video where we actually got this motor running. This, this is a 64 Galaxy 500 with what I'm told is a 390, although this car came originally with a 352. It's got an automatic, it's got a nine inch. So let's tear in these brakes and see what we can do. Ralph, he's got hungry. He didn't realize we had an 18 pack out here. Cracked up I am. I mean, we don't normally do this at the beginning of a video, but I guess we can change it up a little bit. You gonna drink your vein and juice? No. I guess I'm just gonna pour one out for my homies. I don't know if any of this hardware is salvageable to reuse, but uh, I'm gonna save as much as I can anyway, just in case we you know, can't find some of the hardware that we need for this thing. Maybe I, I can use grease the spring here, I don't know. This cable's not all the way through yet. But, I'm not sure. Oh, man. Okay. Not much holding on. Look at that guy. How did, I bet the, uh, the puller probably did that to that thing there. Look at that. This looks like it came off the Atosia. Man, how did it get that rusty? Look how nasty this is. It's hard. Is it? Yeah. Man, I guess that's just years of like grease and uh, dirt and mud and everything just getting caked together. We're going to have to get to it though if we're going to replace that brake hose. There you go. You might could just use the pick end of that body hammer. You know? That's crazy. It's just like some parts are hard and some are like kind of squishy. Well, Ralphie's gave up on it and made me start working on it. I don't know that I've ever had to dig one out this bad. I feel like I'm an archeologist here. We're gonna find like some sort of, you know, dinosaur tooth here in a minute. Well, I finally dug it out of there. No Tyrannosaurus Rex teeth or anything, but we did get down to this. I'm gonna spray this down with PB Blaster now, and we'll start taking the wheel cylinder off. These wheel cylinders hold on differently than what a lot of them do. Usually they got two bolts on the back side. But this one's quite a bit different here. So I just ended up cutting the brake hose and pulling that out. It's a 5.8. And look down there, it is super rusted up. That's why you always gotta change your wheel cylinders when you got a car that's been sitting a long time. We gotta clean up this backing plate. It's in terrible shape. I guess I'm just gonna wire brush some these big chunks off here. So obviously we have a bunch of rust and stuff in the grease. So we gotta clean all this off. It looks like brand new in there, doesn't it? Yeah. That's crazy. It comes off super easy. I guess whatever oh, undercoating right. they put on it mm -hmm. is coming loose, isn't it? Yeah. We've got a brand new car. I wish we could do this to the whole car. Wow, that's crazy how nice that looks under there. This wheel cylinder here is in a little bit better shape than that other one is. Well, this doesn't look like it's going to come out easily. I've been messing with it for a while now. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm gonna strip it out. I think I'll heat it up with a little propane torch. Oh, we got it, but is the line turning with it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, I tried to get the line with my vice grips to hold it from spinning like I usually do, and it still spun it off. So we're gonna have to dig 
all this out and make a new line. This is probably going to be a reoccurring theme in this video. Some of this hardware I'm going to be able to reuse, but a lot of it's in rough shape. Uh, I want to reuse everything I can. I got some new hardware kits from O'Reilly's, but uh, I didn't get enough to replace literally everything. Straighten this thing back out. Trying to clean the rust out of the track that this cable rides in so it doesn't rub through the new cable. Well, I thought I bought enough hardware, but uh, this spring right here, which I believe goes from here to here, we don't have. So I've got to come up with this spring uh, to finish this thing out. That's the only piece of hardware in here that uh, I wasn't able to salvage and I didn't have a new piece to. Now, I guess while I'm waiting to figure out about this spring for the other side, I'm going to take this side apart. Better salvage these springs off the ground, huh? And uh, I won't bore you with all the details on this one unless I run into some big problems because it's just like the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and take the back drums off if we can and see. I don't want to run into more hardware issues back here that I don't know about uh, so we get all the hardware at once. That kind of screwed up our drum. We may be able to heat that up and flatten it back out. Look at the shoes here. That cable's not broke, it doesn't look like. Man, rough shape. Well, it's a good thing I checked these. I'm pretty sure these brake shoes are 100% incorrect, so. We're going to have to take them back and try to get the right thing. Wow, Ralphie's talking about all the stuff that fell out of that thing. That's crazy, isn't it, how much stuff came out of it? Yeah. He don't like the loud noise. But we're having the same results. It's hanging up on the stud. So we're going to flip this thing around and try to take it off, uh, you know, 90 degrees. What is that? Was that 180 or 90, Ralphie? Yeah. From this to this, what's that? From that, that that's that one eighty, right? No, that's one eighty across. So that would be. Is this yeah. ninety? <laughs> yeah, ninety, 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 ninety degrees. We're gonna move it ninety degrees, correct? Uh, <laughs> well, if you're moving it from there to there, that would be one eighty because. No, one eighty is this all the way around. Uh, so you're moving it ninety because. Yeah, you, yeah. Because you got that, yeah. All right, math and stuff. I don't know why it's hanging up on one stud like that. Oh, there we go. There we go. Man, look. It's crazy how much junk is in these drums. It's like this car, like they use it to back the old boat down in the water before they parked it or something it's so crazy how much rust is in these brakes it's unbelievable well as terrible as they look the springs still look like i mean i'm gonna test on them a little bit and see but hopefully these springs are not all broken now the cable's definitely broken i don't think i have enough cables I'm gonna verify some of these other parts I've got too while we're in here. While I gotta make a trip to the store. I like the old hose in a hose trick. I mean, this whoever did this had to be related to me. Let's see how they did this trick right here. I'm kind of curious. I mean, this is an education. How did that ever seal up without a piece of metal in there? To give it something to, ooh, to give it something to push against with a clamp, and you, sir, you're a genius. I'm gonna say this hose is majorly incorrect. It's like half 
the diameter of that thing right there. And, you know, diameter times radius equals pi squared, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, our belt is just a little bit shy. I think it's because I ordered it for a 64 Galaxy with a 352, and I believe this has been swapped to like a, I don't know, some of you guys are saying like 67 model. So apparently uh, this 60 something model 390 is not got the same belt because of the alternator probably. Well, I went to the parts store and we got a little bit longer belt, a bigger lower radiator hose. We got some uh, brake springs and cables and stuff that we needed. Um, and they ordered some more brake shoes and they were also wrong. Apparently these are for 10 inch drums, two inches wide. And when I looked up, only thing I can find that came with that was like Fairlane, some Torino, some Falcons. So we ordered brake pads for one of them. Hopefully we got the correct air filter now. I just ordered this for a 66 model 390 because apparently this has had an engine swap at some point. So this came with a bunch of different springs and hardware and got the new spring on there, got the new cable on there and we should be good to go. We just gotta adjust this to the right dimension and uh, on our way. Still had some antifreeze in it. I never can make it all in the pan. I don't know about you guys. Comment below. Do you ever make it all in the pan when you drain a radiator? I get about maybe two thirds of it in the pan if I'm lucky. Well, it looks like our new lower hose is correct. We may have to trim it just a little bit. Same thing with the upper hose over here. I think we're just gonna have to trim them just a little bit, but they look like they're correct. Well, it looks like they have plenty of antifreeze in it, so that makes me feel good about the condition of the block. But uh, that wasn't too bad to get off there. You can still leave that alternator bolt in without having to take it off. I'm probably going to take this out and change out the thermostat while I've got all this off and flush the uh, rust and junk out of this thing. But uh, our old water pump there, she's still locked up pretty tight. We're going to compare it to the new one make sure it's correct. Okay, well, that looks correct to me. So... We should be good to go. You know, tell me too in the comments, are these common to have water pump issues? Cause if you watch the 67 Thunderbird video, that 390 had a locked up water pump and this 390 has a locked up water pump. So I am i don't know, you tell me, is that happen all the time with these or something? I don't know why, but I kind of like how these reservoirs look. They just kind of look cool. Even though they're kind of in the way, they do kind of look cool. Let's see what our, our thermostat looks like. <sighs> well, that thing's not stopped up too bad. Ralphie went to the store with Mama and come back with candy. Those aren't good for you. That'll rot your teeth out, kid. So I didn't have a new thermostat gasket, so I just gooped it up with former gasket, put a 160 thermostat in it because that's how I roll. Replace this hose with a new one and bolt that water pump up with the new gaskets. We got the new hoses on. Both of them are kind of kinkle dinkled. 
I don't know what the deal is. If this has the wrong radiator in it, I'm sure one of y'all will know, but uh, I don't know. The hoses fit, but just barely. Like sitting here laughing, getting scratched. Yes. That's a good Vienna. I just took this fitting out of here. Man, no wonder this water pump is locked up. Look at that. That thing's absolutely caked up with stuff. That thing's more stopped up than the time I ate a whole block of Velveeta. I got that fitting put in there and just looped the heater hose back around to here because the last guy had already unhooked the heater lines and looped them. And I assume he know what knows what he was doing considering he bought a Ford. So an anonymous viewer sent me a really nice remote start switch. Now I just got a uh, a cheap one for 10 bucks, but this is like a $20 one. I mean, I could have never afforded this. So I appreciate the anonymous viewer that sent me this. Well, as you probably saw, I had to take this off like three times. I got it on there and then realized that the bolt for this bracket is behind the pulley. Then I realized that you guys probably noticed that this boss for the bolt for this upper bracket uh, is missing on this water pump. So I had to put a nut on the back side of that bracket, but it should, still should be good. So we're going to tighten this belt up. And we should have all this buttoned up. That belt was a little bit long. It's a 15488 belt. The other one was a little bit too short, so I guess I needed something in the middle, but it's not terrible. I think it'll work. Up, Granny. Give me some room, honey. Uh, anyway, we're going to go get some water and put it in this thing and see if we have any leaks. Right, Ralphie? Yeah. Hopefully we don't. This thing really is going to need antifreeze this time of year. It's getting down to the 20s already, but, uh, you know, antifreeze ain't free, so... Uh, we're gonna fill it up with water, see how it runs, and then we'll drain it and put antifreeze in it if it doesn't have any leaks. Well, we've definitely got some leaks in this radiator, so we may have to fill it up uh, moments before we run it. I don't see any other leaks underneath there, though. I'm definitely gonna have to get some uh, more of Squeezy's Play-Doh and put on that or something. But I was reading the manual on this carburetor. If you watched in the last video how much it was smoking, uh, and it was loading up Apparently I've either not got a full 12 volts here when it's running or this is out of adjustment. It says to turn it clockwise To have less choke or for the choke to come off earlier So we're gonna try that and I'm also gonna check the voltage and make sure it's good because this thing was uh, Smoking like a tar kettle as granny used to say <laughs> Trash all over my face. It's not getting 12 volts, so that's what's up with our choke. Is for some reason we're losing power to it. I don't know why. You stopping the hole up with your finger? Yeah. <laughs> is it warm? No, it's like cold. All right, all right let's try this again. <laughs>
So we know we got to adjust this linkage. We got to get a little more slack in that because it's wanting to hold the throttle open. I still don't have voltage to my choke, so I got to find a source for that as well. But hey, motor's running pretty smooth. I need to get a timing light on it because I bumped that thing when I was putting the water pump on and now we don't know. I'm going to get a timing light on it real quick. Let's verify our timing here. just like the last one of these FEs I messed with, I didn't see any timing marks down there. So I just kind of timed it by ear there. We'll have to time it out on the road later. Well, I've already probably been commenting is that our vacuum advance is not hooked up. I don't know if it's broke or not, but we're gonna hook it up at some point and uh, see if it works. Yeah, we got a little bit of a leak, just a small leak. I'm really excited though with how well this thing runs considering, you know, it was a mystery motor. We had no idea how well it would run, but it seems to be doing really good. I probably need to change the oil too at some point. We don't need to put too many miles on the nasty oil because like with the Falcon, when I did the first oil change in it, it was totally black after like two or 300 miles. Well, of course I've let my stuff get kicked over in the dirt down here. So we're gonna have to clean all this up, get all the trash out of there and uh, get these bearings re-greased. Now that I've got those uh, bearings cleaned up, I've moved on to back to working on this side. I just cut this brake line. I wanted to show you, this is why you have to replace your brake hoses when they uh, have been sitting. The inside swells up from age to the point where if it gets fluid through, it usually won't let it back out and your brakes will just lock up. So uh, you have to replace the hoses if they've been sitting, you know, 20, 30 years like a car like this has and uh, there's just no way around it. Well, similar results over here on the uh, brake line. It, even though I tried to clamp on it and hold it, it still kinked the thing off. So we're about to snap this brake line off too and have to make it. I, I may end up having to make every brake line on this thing, which it's not terrible to do. Making new lines is easier than, you know, putting a new end on an old line really. Hopefully I put it all back right. So I think we're all done here. And uh, I'm happy to be done with the front now. So me and Ralph, you're gonna have to excavate to get to this thing. I mean, this is unbelievable. Get a close up on that, Ralphie. Man, look at that. I've never had a car that had this much junk caked on the frame rails. I mean, what did they do? They Were they going through the field getting the cow patties? What's up? Well, there's the junction block, which is way down in there, unfortunately. And uh, we're gonna have to try to get to that. And this line is blocking me really being able to get to the other one. I think I'm gonna take the master cylinder line loose first. Well, luckily the one on the master cylinder has came loose without twisting off. So that's a first on this car. Well, I was able to get the master cylinder line off, and now we're working on this broken line here for the left front brakes. Man, I wish this was in a better spot, but it is just not easy to get down here. So, went to start flaring my new brake line, and uh, the whole metal cone piece is missing off this, so... I guess me and Ralphie's gonna have to go get a new one, even though we have everything but that one little piece, so... That stinks. That stuff happened to you guys. It happens to us every now and then. Wawa decided to go with us too, so... Man, it feels like it's 10 o'clock at night. It's like 6. It's crazy. What is it? Party night at Harbor Freight? We didn't get the memo. 
I didn't dress for that. I thought we were going to AutoZone. Why do you need to go to AutoZone? Because there ain't no candy here. Oh, so you don't like Harbor Freight because they don't have candy? Yeah. <laughs> what a baby. I don't even think they have the flaring tool here. We may have to go to the AutoZone. Please. Yes. I'm so excited now. Kidding me? They don't have it at AutoZone. They don't have it at O'Reilly's. They don't have it at Harbor Freight. Just our luck. Oh, we finally found it. Advanced Auto Parts has it. Have two two different kinds. Big babies got their candy. Yes. <laughs> Thank the Lord and Graham for Advanced Auto Parts. I don't normally come here, but man, they came through with the brake flaring tool. What are you looking for? I have already lost the die for the double flaring tool that we've had for 10 minutes. I've already lost the thing somewhere in here. Oh, shoot, there it is. Found it, Never mind. So the way this double flaring tool works, which I've always had just a single flaring tool, you scoot the metal line out till it's flush with the end of your die like that, and then you clamp this down. Then you take this die and put it inside there, and then take your flaring tool and you push this thing down flat with that. You can put this in a vise to hold it. Uh, normal people would do that probably. Then you take the die out and squish this thing down flat again. And that's what you end up with right there is a double flare. And then you can take your tubing bender like this, or you can use the tubing bender that the Lord gave you and uh, just bend this brake line. Okay. There you go. Uh, line done in one shot, man. It's uh, It was exactly the right length. So that was incredible. I feel like a hero for doing that. But the other side, I thought I was gonna have to make a line for the other side and I may still have to. But then I noticed it twisted just a little bit and then it stopped twisting and it actually the nut spun free. So I'm gonna chance it on that one. But I'm not gonna hook these lines, these hoses up yet to the lines because I want to flush any trash out of the metal line before we hook that up or you're just putting it straight into your wheel cylinder and uh, it might hang it up or something. Isn't that right, Rocky? You can't let the trash go through your wheel cylinders, right? Don't eat the PB blaster. Come on. Time to move on to the master cylinder. You gotta love these little simple two bolt master cylinders. So these are not very safe to use. Um, basically, you have one line, one reservoir. If anything goes wrong with your brakes, you lose all your brakes. The only reason I'm using a new one like this is because you'll see in later on videos we'll do this car. This is uh, historically accurate to what I'm planning on doing with the car. So that's why I'm using it. He's found the old Vienna can over here. Mm. Yeah, is that good? <laughs> So this is your brake light switch. I didn't actually know that when I built the Falcon a few months back, but figured out that is the brake light switch right there. It just runs off pressure, which is really odd to me. Yeah, we're good. Ugh. All right, we got that installed. This, these things are easier than community college to install. Okay, well, this brake line actually came loose. I couldn't believe it. I was very much expecting that uh, this would be all rusted up, but it wasn't. Oh, there you go. You got it. Good job. It's kind of stuck on there, wasn't it? It's full of rust, isn't it? Yeah. It looks correct to me. That's the last bolt. Oh yeah, nothing to it. So this rear brake hose is just hanging out here in the middle of space. Apparently somebody has remade the rear brake line and just let it hang out here. I, I mean, I appreciate them doing this. It makes it a lot easier for me. This line right here is not wanting to come loose, but, uh, and these brake hoses will blow up in your face. So I've done that several times before. Well, 
the brake line snapped off on me. I tried, and this nut was already stripped out. I had to get some vice grips on it. So we're gonna have to put a new end on this line or replace it one of the two now. Well, unforeseen problem here. Every time I buy a brake hose from Wrong Auto, uh, they send me this exact same brake hose over and over again that is always incorrect. And once again, it's incorrect. So this fitting is a larger diameter than the fitting on the new hose. So we're gonna have to source another hose or an adapter or something to make this work. This is the hose off the Metro Mite. And this end is correct, but the other end is a quarter inch brake hose instead of 3 16th. So I don't know what we're gonna do. What do you think we ought to do? You got any advice, Rocky? No, nothing. Oh, eat it? Yeah, that always works. Yeah, that'll work. Just eat it. Is that good? Maybe we can get the hose at the parts store. Maybe they have it in stock. Cross your fingers, kids. They're awesome. Let's drive off. Okay, well, second store still didn't find what we we're looking for, but they ended up getting some candy again. So you see how this works, right? Yeah. yeah. So we went to O'Reilly's first, then AutoZone in advance, and nobody had anything. So I um, guess I'm gonna have to order it from somewhere because nobody has it. Tell you the truth, dealing with the kids at the parts stores on these parts like this that you can't just type in what it is and get it, it gets me madder than a vegan at an Atkins convention. Porter cable. Now, before you go comment and blow, I realize that this thing probably needs drums. Uh, there's a couple of them that are probably hurt worse than turning them could fix. And uh, I know I should probably get drums for it, but we're doing this on a budget, you know? It'll work. Well, as you can see there, um, I got the uh, dirt cleaned out of the inside of where the bearings go from where we ground all that rust off and cleaned up the bearings, got them greased up, put them in there, put the new seals in. One tip is with the seals, you want to, you don't want to try to tap one side down and leave the other side up. So you kind of want to tap around the edge evenly. And if one side's lower, you want to tap the higher side down. And then when you put your your drums on here, you want to, you know, I, I'll usually spin this thing while I'm tightening it up. I tighten it down snug and then back it off like a quarter of a turn. And then put your clotter key in, you should be good to go. You also need to pre-adjust your brakes. Uh, and these are left and right hand too. So one of them's left hand threads, one's right hand threads. But you want to adjust this until your, your drum's just barely dragging. And that way you kind of got it preset, even though this is like an automatic adjusting drum, you don't want to have it set all the way in. I'm going to go ahead and goop this radiator up here. Hopefully 
and that'll stop our leak. I dried it off before I did this. We've had pretty good luck doing this before. Like it never even happened. So now we're going to try to pump the fluid out of these front lines and hook the front brake hoses up. Go ahead and pump it. There you go. Yeah, we got brown stuff coming out now. See, this is why you have to leave this unhooked until you hook the brake hoses up. Because if you don't, all that junk right there is going right in your wheel cylinders, like I said before. I checked, and everywhere I've checked with can't get me the rear brake hose in a timely manner. So, what Daddy's going to do, you've seen me do this before. For now, I'm just going to kink off the rear brake line. And we're going to get this thing lot drivable the way it is. Because, you know, ADD and stuff. Oh, man. <clears throat> Scooty, are you helping today? He's so cold out here. It's like in the 20s degrees now. And Scooty doesn't really like the cold. He doesn't have enough. <laughs> whatever it takes to keep warm so here's where we're at we we had it kinked off over there and we were trying to bleed the front brakes and they just would not completely bleed and i'm assuming there's a bunch of air in this rear line well this line had been union together right here so i kinked it off right behind it thinking if there was any air past this point we would trap it back there and i could bleed it right here well now Looks like I've created a brake leak right here. So we're gonna have to figure out how to really cap this off so it doesn't leak or we're never gonna get these brakes bled. It's been, we've been working on this for quite a while now. Well, as you can see, I've made this thing kinkier than those girls at the truck stop. And it's still, it's still pushing fluid out of the end of this. So we're gonna have to pursue a different route on blocking off the rear brakes uh because this is not working everything we do we still get air my piggies are getting so cold i had to switch over to my winter flops these keep your piggies a little warmer than them reefs do but we'll still have to use the reef so to open the bottles it, now if these right here if these flops had bottle openers in the bottom of them i mean what other footwear would you even need aside from these well i've decided that I'm just gonna take this line out of here, the old line, because I can't kink it off. I can't use it. It's just uh, in too bad a shape. So it's of course down in here where you can't get to it. So here's what I decided to do. I just made a new line that's like an inch long, kinkle dinkled it off just like we did with the Falcon. Except for with this car, I do plan on coming back once we get the correct hose and uh, getting all the rear brakes working. But for now, just to drive around here, this is what we're gonna do. Yeah, that's weird. Guys, I'm telling you, I have worked on these brakes for hours now, hours and hours and days, and I can't get this thing to bleed. I have no idea what's wrong. I thought it was the rear brake line had a bunch of air in it. So we tried to bleed at the back, then we kinked it, kinked it, kinked it, kinked it. Then we took it out, put the new piece in like you saw, kinked it off. So now the only brake system is here and here. That's the only brake system. There's nothing to it. There's no leaks anywhere. And I don't know, every time you pump the brakes, bubbles come up here in the master cylinder. I have no idea what's wrong. I can't get this thing to bleed. And whatever's going on, I think it's sucking air in somewhere over here because Every time you bleed it, it pumps a bunch of air out of this side. And uh, every time you bleed it, air, 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 air never goes away. We've been working on it for hours. I have, I have no idea what's wrong. I don't know what to do now. So we've been bleeding and bleeding. I went through and tightened every single fitting along the way. Nothing seems to help except for, uh, it seems like when you first, um, after you bleed them, every time you, Take this splitter screw loose, you get air. And then the brakes don't work for a few minutes and then they start working again. And then if you bleed on the brakes, stop working again. 
And if you leave them for a few minutes, they start working. So we're just going to leave it, I guess, and see what happens, you know? We're just going to try it out. Check out this killer wagon wheel I've got, huh? Got that from Grandma's house. It's a similar condition to the vehicle, but it's got a brand new casing on it. That's what really matters here. Trying to find the casing that'll air up and fit on there. That's not the right pattern. Hey, that one right there might work. Get a hold there. Now we won't be able to leave this thing outside considering how cold it is. But we're just gonna run straight water in it for now until we see if we got any more leaks or issues and then we'll uh, flush it out and put coolant in it later. I think we're low on fluid because it's showing to be in the operating range when it's not running. Usually they're really high when they're not running. So I'm gonna put a couple quarts in it and see if we can get this transmission to pull. Here we go. Oh, let me turn the key on. Neutral, reverse, park. Why did it go forward? Huh. Pull it down, all the way down. Okay, I guess, and then slowly go back all the way up to park. I guess every gear is park. Something's got to be up with that thing. I'm going to, uh, while we have it jacked up, I'm going to start it up again, put it in gear, and see if anything happens. showing we're a couple quarts low of uh, fluid and uh we've already put three in it so we're gonna have to put some more fluid in it but we have dry but no reverse and then when you put it in park anywhere near park even when the wheels aren't turning it's grinding like crazy which it shouldn't be as long as the wheels aren't turning i don't know what's up with this transmission something must be busted in it 
I don't know. Maybe so not. we're headed back to the part store. Like time number ten thousand on this car. It's fought me like no other to get some transmission fluid. Okay, we're back from the parts store now in church. And I'm just gonna take this pan down and see what's in it because something ain't right. And I don't know what it is, but we're gonna find out together maybe. Trying not to dump the whole pan at once. I try to leave like a bolt and maybe each end and then try to tip the end of it is what I like to do. That way you don't just absolutely soak yourself here. Got all but two bolts out and I got them loose. There we go. Let it drain the pan there. The bolt out on this side. There we go. Hey, I actually caught most of it. Wow, that's a new record for me. Well, I was gonna video dropping the pan down. I thought I had one bolt left and it wasn't catching any thread, so it kind of fell while I wasn't filming. Let's get this thing out and look at it. Uh, man, it looks chunky. What is that from, water in it? Oh gosh, that's terrible looking. Oh my gosh, look at that, wow. Maybe this is why our transmission isn't working. It, lo it looks like it's like clutch material maybe that sat in the bottom of this. Maybe this is what uh, burning your transmission up 30 years ago and then parking it looks like. Wow. That's just incredible. Wow. I definitely think some water got in it too, sitting. Oh my gosh, is it even gonna make it through my funnel? Man. You don't want that. That's not good. So let's see if everything's working in here. Yeah, that's working the piston or whatever you call it in the valve body. That's what I was really wondering. If it was working that, it looks to be. Mm. Look at this. What is that? It's like, I think it's burn up clutch material. And I think it's got water in it too and sitting 30 yeah. years. What do you think about that? That's disgusting. Some of you might not remember, this is Scooter. He doesn't like to come out here because he's scared of literally everything like we if you wanted to make a list of what he's scared of you'd be better off to make a list of things he's not scared of which is as far as i know only baby mice and moles right yeah he eats them <laughs> yes he does i just wanted to show you that it's crazy huh yeah take that filter off now i tried to get one from the parts store and of course nobody has it in stock and so we're gonna clean this thing since t tomorrow's Thanksgiving. We can't get anything. I think we got a, about all of it out of there. Well, we got all the junk out of the pan. So I don't know, maybe this will help, maybe not. We'll see. This is what trans fluid, brake fluid, 30 years of rust and booters and calendar looks like. So we just reused everything. The old gasket, the old filter, because I couldn't get one from the parts store in time. Okay, let's put some fresh top F down in this thing and see if that helps at all. I don't know what else to do if it doesn't, because if, if it doesn't work with this, something in that transmission smoked, because it's obviously moving the shift lever correctly. We know the filter's clean now, the fluid's good. See what happens. I went ahead and bought a return spring and bracket from O'Reilly's while I was there because this thing's not one to return back to idle, so maybe that'll help. Well, I was gonna check the differential oil. 
and uh, busted the end off my ratchet and got it stuck in there. So uh, we're going to have to come back to this later before we put many miles on it because uh, you never know how much oil is in the rear end. People don't check it much. It's like you pull it down and this wheel takes off going forward and all of a sudden it hangs up and then you pull it down a couple more gears and then it takes off going forward and then the throttle linkage on the car was kind of holding it open too far so I just adjusted it, turned the linkage out just a little bit farther. Uh, so the high idle, we got way too high of idle, but I don't know what's up with this thing. There's got to be something internally up with this transmission is what I'm thinking because I don't know why reverse isn't working and it's like you put it in reverse and the car goes forward. That doesn't make any sense. We checked all the shifter linkage. Everything looks fine. I don't know. So we're in park right here. And the car is in park. You pull it down. Two clicks. You're still in park. Pull it all the way down. Still in park. I don't know, guys. So how do you like driving it? It's fun. Yeah? Hard to steer? Yeah. Hard to you don't like the manual steering? No, not at all. It seems to be rolling all right though, huh? Yeah. I don't know what's up. We're just try we'll try to drive it out here where we got some room to make mistakes. Because we about we about knocked the uh tools over, didn't we? Yeah. In the shop. Check out how much junk is under this car. This is what happens when you have a car that's just covered in rust and junk. Man, I've got a mess to clean up in here, don't I? Every time this happens to me. Every time. Are you ready for the maiden voyage? Yeah. We probably should have cleaned the windshield, huh? Yeah. That would have been a good idea.
Okay, so our battery appears to be kind of running low here. So I got our, our Top Dawn JS1200 that uh, a company sent us to try out. And this has been the first chance we've had to really use it. So we'll see uh, if it cranks over faster with this thing. It's only at 50% charge. I'll put a link in the description below about where you can purchase this if you're interested. It was bouncing off 120 on the speed on there. I was trying to get a video of it. Wow, look at all the rubber. Look at, oh, it was getting both tires the whole time. It's a posse. Man, the neighbors are gonna love that. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> That's a good thing about having only front brakes too, man. You can do a wicked burnout without even hurting your back brakes. Man, that was awesome, wasn't it? High five. Do you love it? Isn't that great? Look, smoke coming out of the trunk still. Look at this smoke growing out of everywhere. Man, it was bouncing off 120 the whole time. Man, this thing, it's just over delivered. It fought me and fought me and fought me and then it just over delivers. And hey, that jump starter worked good too. That thing cranked it right up as soon as we hooked that up. I've never had a lithium one like that. I've always had like the old timey ones, you know? But that thing is awesome. How cool is that? Just watching the smoke roll out of the quarter panels. We should open the trunk and see how much smoke is in it. I bet there's a ton in the trunk. <laughs> it's got so many holes in the floor, it had to have smoke in there. I'm gonna have to switch to my summer flops for this, right? Hey, now Ralphie picked this up at the Rule King. This is a, uh, dang, that's good. Is that what it's called? We'll see if they're right pretty good. We had to crack a vainia. You know what we do around here. RC calls them vainias. You want a vainia, Rocky? Huh? Well, guys, we appreciate you watching. And uh, go back and watch the old videos of this car if you haven't. I can't believe what kind of burnout this thing did, though. It really surprised me. It surprised you? 120 mile an hour burnout with both casings? That's crazy. So if you don't already do it, guys, Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and believe it or not, TikTok. Sleeper Dude 88 on all of them now. We just, you know, got them all the same now. I appreciate you guys watching. You can also click below. You can buy the merchandise, buy t-shirts or hoodies for this winter. Oh, hit me with a vein, he says. And uh, we also have a second channel, Sleeper Dude 2, where we put up short videos, funny stuff. Remember, we blew that microwave up. That's a good one to watch. Go watch that one. Mama, you want a vanya? No, I always prefer the smoke. Not the barbecue. What? You like the smoked ones? Mm -hmm. Okay. I like the barbecue ones. Hit me. I really appreciate you guys watching. And uh, videos of this car. I've actually ordered some hoops for it. Got some casings on the way. We'll do a cleanup video of it. And I've got a kind of a good idea for this car. I think you guys will like it. So stay tuned. And we'll see you in another video. Right, Ralphie? Right, Wawa? Mm -hmm. Gotta pour one out for your homies.